Talking about bringing down the cost of certain things, when you were running the Fed, you talked about debt and deficits all the time, and you encouraged Congress to try to bring those things down. Right. We are now at a U.S. budget deficit has reached $1.2 uh, trillion. It has not come down. Uh, it has actually only gone up. What are you doing? Well, it has come down since the pandemic. Since, since the pandemic on, on a, yes, but um, on, a, on a total number, we're in, we're in a, we're, we're in a, we have a real challenge. Is there a plan to bring the, bring this number down materially, and I'm talking about the total, total debt load, that you see the president pursuing? Well, I think that if the debt is stabilized relative to the size of the economy, that we're in a reasonable place. Um, the way I look at it is that we should be looking at the real interest cost of the debt. That's really right. what the burden is. And um, in the budget the president presented for this coming fiscal year, um, he proposes $3 trillion of deficit reduction over the next decade, and that's sufficient to basically keep the debt-to-income right. ratio stable, and this interest burden would be stabilized right. at But how much of that is increasing taxes level. versus actually cutting costs? Well, um, it's difficult to cut costs. Discretionary spending, um, which is what's right. governed by appropriations, it has fallen relative to the size of GDP. and. Um, if once you involved in looking what's what, right. what's in there, um, more than half of it is defense. Um, it's really not right. possible to get cuts there, and a growing uh, source of expenditure is um, for retirement right. programs, Social Security, and Medicare. And you know, I, I think it's right to. T especially the Job Cuts and Tax Act, right. um, provisions of which will expire at the end of next year, really resulted in a substantial loss in revenue. And so undoing some of that and asking the wealthiest and highest income Americans to pay their fair share right. and, um, you know, raising corporate taxes somewhat, right. not back to previous um, levels, is is part of a what right. I think is a reasonable plan. Finally, you've come out and said you are uh, against a global wealth tax. I was interviewing President Macron. He said that it's a pity uh, that you are against a global wealth tax. But are you for a wealth tax effectively in the U.S.? Well, I don't, it's not a wealth tax, but we have proposed and do agree with the basic concept that billionaires should be paying more taxes than they are. But on their Very, unrealized income? Well, yes, because these unrealized capital gains are an enormous source of of income for people, and often they escape uh, taxation completely, even at death, due to step up of basis. And so, yes, I believe that is a source of could, income. If you could fix the step up of basis issue and some of the other issues around these things, would you be an advocate of, of taxing unrealized gains? Because there's always a question about how the, the mechanics of doing it, the well, practicality of doing it. So there is that issue. Um, we have a concrete proposal to do it that we put forward it would apply to um, individuals with wealth over $100 million. And if people had their wealth in a liquid forms, they wouldn't be required to sell those assets. Um, they, they could wait, wait in, uh, till to death or till later on when mm -hmm. the assets are sold. So there are practical issues, but um, I think they can be addressed, and we tried to do it. Right. So we are definitely in favor of higher taxes on billionaires, and we have a proposal. So um, I just don't think we need a whole global right. negotiation to accomplish this, but I think it's the right thing to do.